All right, building the sets uh, for Archetype, um, you know, started off as, uh, like I said before, and the, st the storyboards really helped um, the look and as far as what we needed to build. Um, so with the storyboards, and it was almost like a keyframe of what we needed, um, was just enough information for uh, me to help um, the art department build what they needed to build, which is basically the lab where, uh, right now we're looking at the lab, this is uh, after the interrogation when we wake up um, f uh, from the interrogation and we realize that that was all a uh, virtual world, we're in the real world, which is a, a lab, and uh, this lab um, uh, was shot basically in a set uh, and then this all this was built this structure inside a big set and we on the other side over here we actually had our um, our uh, interrogation room that was on over on the right hand side of this but this basically helped lay out what I needed um, for the art department to build uh, we started working on measurements based on this um, back here is where RL7 the robot was going to be encased in this glass and it would be this whole virtual you know screen here um, that would come up and um, basically go through his schematics and figure out you know what's going on, what's wrong with him, how they were accessing him through this, uh, and they basically locked him into this. Um, and then this whole thing here was the uh, chair that our uh, interrogator here was sitting in, and it's kind of a virtual um, uh, reality um, uh, uh, seat that he would be in. Um, that he's hooked up into all these components here it, that makes him feel and uh, realize everything in the room so that if it's the smells it feels you know feels everything all that stuff would feel real um, so he could gain information from whoever he's interrogating when they're hooked up to another device like this and in this case it was our robot um, so this this helped in the design of the chair uh, this kind of showed where the chair was going to be um, uh, where basically um, Stacy, uh, which is you know our lab assistant, she was going to be standing and monitoring and actually doing all the work on the uh, uh, the screens here, um, and helping him while he's in the interrogation uh, in the virtual world. Uh, I call it my node world. Um, and so basically, again, this this helped uh, my art department. Uh, uh, it was uh, the Spence. It was Tom Spence and Jennifer Spence uh, that uh, and their team basically built everything, and um, they're incredibly talented. The uh, Jennifer and Tom are just you know the easiest people to work with. They um, we figured out solutions on how some of this stuff was going to be you know built, what was going to be made of, what is this material here? Is it plastic? Is it wood that's just painted to look like some you know um, interesting uh, material? Um, I kind of showed them some images of uh, uh, the Nostromo from Alien, because I kind of like that feel. So this is what was kind of like an inspiration for at least the look, the color palette uh, elements. And we kind of went a little further from that, but Lisa started the place to, to where we could actually start building it from and get an idea, budget from this, these designs, and you know, uh, get a team together to, to create it. Um, so let me, uh, I'll go into the, uh, made a little video here that basically um oh here let me stop this real quick uh um bear with me here for a second all right so um here let me uh oh wait, sorry sorry about this did that wrong. Here we go. So this was the location. Um, it was in the valley here in California. Uh, and, um, you know, it was a warehouse that uh, Tom and uh, Jennifer work out of. And, um, you know, both sets were built. Right here is going to be where the lab is. They're just starting it right now, getting the frame. And then on the other side over here, we'll get to in a bit, is uh, the interrogation scene. So, you know, again, getting back to the artwork, um, you know, the lab scene, uh, this was just our reference that the guys used uh, to start creating it. So the guys together started to um, measure out what how big that was going to be. We all agreed on it and started to assemble it, you know, framed it out. Um, 
came up with clever ways to actually do it on a very low budget. Um, and uh, they were just troopers. I mean, they did all this within just a few days. Um, I mean, the entire set was built within a few days. It was less than a week for um, both sets. Uh, so these guys are real pros, obviously. Um, you know, each piece was like measured out, uh, cut, and uh, started to be assembled. You know, this is the the great floor for um, the lab scene. We um, were trying to figure out what the floor was going to be made of, and so we tried different materials. It was just going to be some kind of um, tile. Um, and I decided, you know, I, I like the idea of this grating because we could actually add s smoke underneath, some steam, so it actually added another layer of texture. Um, and it was semi-inexpensive. So, so it was just coming together like a clever way of how, how those pieces would fit together too so they wouldn't compete with each other. Again, some of this was found uh, stuff, some was bought, and then, you know, um, you can see the walls over here, you know, how how they've already come together, which is, you know, they look pretty amazing. That's Tom. Uh, he's just doing his uh, measurements. And Jennifer here, she's uh, working on the chair. Uh, so this is the early stages. We actually started with like a basic uh, um, uh, lounge chair. And uh, from there, it was just, you know, started to build the framing around it. You know, there's a lot of padding that had to, to be added. Uh, just so much work went into this. And this was, again, this was all this stuff was done in less than a week at a very limited budget. Um, but these guys, you know, Tom and uh, Jennifer both uh, are such pros. You know, they come up with clever ways to, to uh, uh, achieve this stuff. And that's part of the process is finding uh, a good team that knows what they're doing so that you can rely on them. And that's part of uh, a success of doing anything is, you know, and then we had our uh, guard dog, of course, so that uh, no one took off with any, any of the things that, uh, the props or anything. So this is our guard dog. <laughs> so Tom's going to explain a little bit here. There's our conceptual. We're kind of marrying the two. That the one above it is very ambitious. The one below is not as, but trying to marry the two together and come up with our nice little lot of containment chair. Um, obviously, it's still a long ways away from being done. This is going to be for our helmet. A little uh, hat that comes down. Voila. Looks good. And uh, yeah, just got a ways to go, but that's where my next two evenings are going to be spent. <laughs> so, then this is the helmet um, that would go on the chair, and there's a final chair. So, you can see how how amazing that came together within just uh, two days. It was, you know, just such professional work. You know, it has a unique quality and, uh, you know, they had such attention to uh, detail, you know, Jennifer and Tom. And then the helmet, and here's, um, uh, this is the keyboard that uh, Stacy uses uh, when she's, you know, programming and getting access to uh, the node-based uh, environment that the guys are in and um, controlling RL7. And this consisted of, uh, which you probably can tell, is a couple of drum sets and some keyboards and a couple of other things and painted all one color. And that's kind of just, you know, uh, how do you get something, you know, throw it together, it doesn't cost much. I mean, the keyboards themselves are like, th I think they were $10 or something like that. Um, uh, I mean, the drum set was like $10. The keyboard, it was, uh, um, wasn't much at all. Uh, I think it was found objects. And so this is kind of the final look. Uh, while well we're getting ready. So, let me go back to that real quick. Uh, before we so, as you can see, there's the uh, the chair, how it, how it fit into uh, the room. We actually uh, decided to put a, um, uh, an upper level on it so that it just kind of had more substantial. Originally, it was just going to be down on the ground, and it felt kind of weird um, since he was kind of a, uh, f uh, a focal piece. Um, so we, so Tom decided, let, you know, it would actually help the feel of this, and and I felt together too, the composition would work really well if we did raise this. So the chair was raised on a platform, which I think just makes it more substantial. 
Uh, so you can see, you know, there's an LED into the, the helmet. Um, how all this works, you know, he's being hooked up. There's the keyboard that we just saw um, that Stacy uses. And then th here will be a virtual screen that's not there. It'll all be done in post. Uh, as a matter of fact, everything behind this glass will pretty much be done, redone in post. Um, even a lot of this detail that we put in there later on, I realized that we actually needed uh, a little bit more complexity to it. So we ended up building it in 3D and putting the robot in there. Um, and RL7 would be right there. And this is Stefan. He's a um, uh, great guy. He's uh, my coordinator here at ASC. He's he kind of hel he helped with the helmet. He helped with the art department. He helped everything basically. So he was quite a trooper. Um, all right. So now we'll move on to uh, the interrogation uh, set. So these are the drawings for that. Uh, this is basically a you know an area. This is an elevator door where. Um, uh, our Jones was going to come into this is going to open up and um, and then the robot would be sitting here originally the robot was going to be on a chair you'll see later on that um, when we got into visual effects and everything I just felt like okay the chair would buckle it wouldn't look real so we put him on a stone um, or a concrete block um, that could be some kind of a charging uh, device or something like that but it just felt more substantial and made more sense but initially we just started with this um, which was a good place because all this was going to get painted out anyway where the robot was because this is where the robot was going to be sitting. Uh, Jones was going to come in, the interrogator, sit down and interrogate him. Um, so this is basically all we needed and these were like removable walls. So this, the walls would come off. Actually these two here, this one and this one, just completely removed themselves at any time so we could have the camera this way or this way. Um, and so uh, with that, with the design there, then there uh, Tom was able to start building it. And so this is it coming together. So is this going to double as, this is going to be the interrogation of the belt? Yeah. yeah. And so he's working on the elevator doors right now. And, uh, and uh, the stone, these are supposed to be like stone walls. And it's amazing when you see it Sorry. in the film, it, it really feels like stone. There's, uh, they just basically took wood and uh, painted on top. You know, some stippling to give it kind of a texture. So, Rich, I think you're going to have to uh, just leave And then this was going to be a light, you know, that we're going to put up there as far as like, you know, indicator that it's, you know, it's locked, it's, it's open. There was a lot of details that, um, that were added just last minute. Um, but the door was a main uh, piece, which it, you know, it's unfortunate because we actually ended up spending some time building this. And uh, and it was more, even though we'll see it in the film, and this is the final, even though we got a C-stand in here, this is kind of the final look. And then we had the lamp, the table, um, the doors. And this is just some kind of a, a device or whatever, like a... Um, uh, so, but unfortunately, again, like I was getting back to the doors, is that this was such a an ordeal to uh, to build and actually work on, you know, and get it to close at the same time, because uh, we had two guys on both sides doing it when we were actually shooting. That actually cut, ended up in the edit, cutting this whole sequence out because it didn't really serve as much of a purpose, um, and the story kind of uh, added li extra length that was not necessary. But again, that was just part of the process, and uh, it's not until you get into the editing room that you realize what you need and what you don't need, for the most part. Uh, so you shoot everything just in case. Uh, so yeah, this is basically um, the final look of of the interrogation room. And so next, uh, I'll cover you know what it was to be on set, work with the actors, and how it was to shoot, you know, on a stage. So that'll be the next stage. Or that'll be the next chapter.